Hi, Bill1911 here. A little while ago we were working on making a video about axe throwing and I over rotated and the handle hit the target first and what that did was it split the handle into two pieces. So now I can purchase a new handle and take this one out and put the new handle in. I can do that or I can fix the one I've got. I kind of wanted to fix the one I've got because it kind of gives us an excuse to make a video. Now, one of the things you're going to want to do is you're going to see little pieces of wood here that are going to prevent you from getting it all the way together. Any little burrs and stuff like that, you want to, you're going to want to clean those out. Now, before we get started, I'm going to show you some things that you're going to need for this, for this build. Now, I wanted to put a copper butt cap on the end of this. So I took the liberty of shaving down the end of the handle here so that it would slip on. However, I needed to make it big enough so that it would accommodate the leather strap that is going to be wrapped around this handle all the way. Now, as you can see, it's a tight fit, but it does go on. Okay, and that's what we want. We want it to be a nice snug, snug fit. That's all going to be epoxied together when we're finished. All right. So, we're also going to need a mallet because we're going to use that to drive dowel pins through the handle. Now, our first step is going to be to epoxy the handle together, and then we're going to drill it in three places and put these oak dowel pins through. Now I cut three of these to length earlier simply by taking a measurement of how long, how deep this handle is, and using my razor saw to cut the dowel. Now I like to use the razor saw because it's very, very sharp, cuts it real easy. If you don't have a razor saw, you can use a common hacksaw, or you can use a coping saw, a wood saw. Any of these will cut the wood. Any way you get it done is just fine. All right, we're going to need some political ads for this. I know that sounds pretty funny, but I'm not going to talk about politics. What I am going to talk about is we're going to be using epoxy glue. Okay, whatever brand you use is fine. Okay, two part epoxy. Now, these political ads. <laughs> I get these things by the thousands every time there's an election. I get probably 10 of these things a day for about three months. And you don't have to care about what's on them. The point is they're a good piece of cardboard that you can put this glue onto. And when you're done, if you have excess, you can simply fold it over on top of it and the epoxy doesn't get stuck on everything else. So it works very well for that. So. I know those useless political ads that are a pain in the neck in your mailbox every year, they actually do have a use that's a, that I think pretty good. You're going to need an electric drill. Okay, so in the background, I don't know whether you heard it, but I just heard a siren. Remember, those are our first responders, and what they do for us every day is really important. So when you hear one of those sirens, be grateful it's there because they may be going to save somebody's life. Okay, back to what we were doing. We're going to need a quarter inch drill bit to drill through this handle because our dowel rod, our little dowel pins, is one quarter of an inch in diameter. Now, we're going to need a way to clamp this wood together. Now, one way to do that is to use a clamp called a woodruff clamp. This is a woodruff clamp. The problem with using that woodruff clamp is that this axe handle is oval shaped. So when you clamp it down on it, it's real easy for it to slip off and become loose. So it's usable, but I think we can find a better way to get that done. And you can do it with a pair of shoelaces, or if you have a piece of par paracord like what I've got here, you can use this to make your clamp. Now those clamps, after you put the epoxy in this joint, you're going to need to clamp this together so that it bonds tightly. 
before we drill the holes for our three dowels, these little dowel pins we cut earlier, we're going to have to make sure that this is glued together and the glue is set. The reason why is because if this is glued together and we pre-drilled the holes, sometimes it won't be lined up perfectly and we won't be able to get the dowel through. The other thing is, even if you do pre-drill it, when you squeeze it together, that glue is going to ooze into that hole and you're not going to be able to get the dowel through. So we want it to be glued and set before we drill our three dowel hole. Dowel hole. Boy, try saying that one three times fast. Before we drill our three dowel holes. Man, I'm having trouble with that one. <laughs> okay. Um, so I guess it's probably time to start gluing that axe handle together. But before I do come to think of it, I'm going to show you how to prepare this cord to make a clamp out of it. All right. On both ends of the cord, we're going to tie a knot called a bowline. Now a bowline, we're going to make a little loop. Tell you what, I'm going to come over there to the camera and show you this a little closer. All right. So we're going to make a loop. All right. And then on the short end over here, we are going to stick it up through the hole, okay? Now if you see, the, the, the short end crosses over the top of the long end. It's going to go back under, stick it up through the hole. We're going to go around the long end and go back through the hole. And then we're going to pull it tight. Now if you look, Every loop in this knot goes solid up against another piece of the string. So we end up with a knot that won't slip. So from there, we're going to do the other end. We're going to make our loop. Remember, it crosses over the top. Then you come underneath, around the long end, and back through the hole, and pull it tight. Simple as that. Now, when we make our clamp, we're going to put a dowel through these. We're going to wrap around our handle and put the dowel through the other one. And then we're simply going to wind it tight like that. And that's what's going to make our clamp that's going to hold our wood together. Another little tip, if you're using parachute cord as a clamp, when you cut it, the end is going to fray quick way to deal with that is one of these self-igniting torches and you melt the end and that's it that's sealed so one of the things we want to do is we want to make an applicator so I'm just going to tear off a piece of this now useful political ad and I'm going to use that fold it up and kind of use it like a, a paint brush to apply my glue to my joint here okay so I'm going to take a little bit of the epoxy this is two part and since it's a double syringe it gives us the right amount out of both tubes so put the cap back on this Now, we're going to stir this up, mix it up a little bit, adjust the end of my new brush a little bit. I might not have enough, but that's the beauty of that tube is I can always get more. All right, I'll stick that in there. Now, different epoxies have different rates on how fast they dry. So that can be pretty important because it gives you time enough to get the epoxy in the glue joint and then from there you've got enough time to work on what you're doing 
to finish your project. If you don't give yourself enough time, then your glue dries before you get your joint put together. Now, like I said, I didn't give myself quite enough. So, a little more. Now, when we go to put the handle on this thing, that leather-wrapped handle, we're also going to use epoxy for that. So, we're going to do it in stages because of how quickly it dries. I dropped the cap. There's a problem. All right, because of how quickly this stuff dries, when we go to put the leather-wrapped handle around this thing, we're going to do it in stages. We're going to get a little bit of it done and mix some more and get a little bit more of it done because if we don't, we won't have enough working time to get it all the way up and down the handle before it dries. Putting that on there is, well, I wouldn't say it's a lengthy process, but it does take time. is just about ready to stick the halves together and clamp it. Now, while this is getting put together, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, clothing that you should wear if you're going to be throwing edged weapons. Okay? You want to make sure that you wear shoes. Absolutely, wear shoes. Because, as you can see, you can rotate this just a little bit wrong, and it can bounce off the target and come right back at you. If that happens, it's dangerous. So you want something there that will prevent you from getting cut. Now, let's see. Alright, so we're going to tighten this up kind of like you would a tourniquet. And when we get it tight enough, get this puppy crank down, we're going to tuck it underneath the handle to hold it still. And we're getting very close to tight enough here. So, about one more wrap. And we're going to tuck this up underneath the handle, like that, and get this end around there, and that should hold still for us. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other end. Okay, i got to go down a little bit further because this is kind of wanting to come apart down here. like that and that's going to clamp us together now in the middle I've got a little bit of separation here and I kind of want to do something about so I am going to end up using this woodruff clamp on it in the middle but like I said it's kind of cumbersome and it's going to want to try and slide off of it ah went the wrong way All right, now, we're going to let that set and dry. And we'll be back in just a few moments. Well, the glue has dried on our handle, and I've taken the clamps off of it. And I've also taken the liberty of putting two starter divots in my handle. I'm going to put the third one here. I'm going to show you how I did that. I just used a pocket knife. 
and I take the point and I just put it right in the wood and I start twisting it back and forth. Rotate it, twist it a little more. Keep doing that until you've got a nice deep divot in the wood. Now the reason why we're doing that is because this wood is rounded and what will happen when you try to drill it is that the drill bit will skate off the side of it unless it has a place where it can bite in. So we put three of those little starters in here like that and now we're going to drill our holes. I got enough battery to finish them. Well, that's two. Well, we got them. Now, you're going to have some burrs and stuff that are on here. Don't worry about them too much because they're all going to be covered up when we wrap them with leather. You can take your knife and smooth them out a little bit so you don't get splinters in your fingers. That's probably a good idea. But don't get too freaked out about it. They'll be fine. And get that one dressed up a little bit. Now we're going to test fit and see how our dowel rods are going to fit. It looks like they're going to be just fine. All right, <clears throat> except for I got that one stuck. <laughs> <clears throat> Having trouble getting that one out. There it came. All right, so now we're going to mix a little more epoxy. We're going to put a little bit inside the holes and we're going to drive those pegs through. That's what our mallet is for. There's one thing that I neglected to tell you about earlier when I showed you the razor saw. And it is kind of important. This thing is so slim this way and so sharp. Be careful when you're cutting with it because believe me, one stroke will go clear to the bone. And you can really cut yourself bad with one of these. It doesn't seem like it would be possible, but believe me, you really can. I've done it. All right, so. Now let's mix up a little bit more epoxy. Ah, something else I forgot to tell you about. This leather strap that I have. You can buy leather strap. It's frequently available at um, uh, fabric stores. You can get it. But with this, I actually spotted an old couch on the side of the road that somebody was throwing out years ago. And I took my trusty pocket knife and I cut the panels out of the back of that couch and took that leather with me. And I've had it around for years. And this is what it ended up being. So it's going to be the wrap, the leather wrap, that goes around our handle. So, let's get this epoxy going. And... <clears throat> Boy, that's stiff. There, we got it. Put the cap on. And right here is my little piece of paper that I wanted to use to mix this up with. All right, there we go, all mixed up. So we're going to put it on our peg Sorry. Something about South Florida is we have a, we're fond of saying if you don't like the weather here, wait five minutes, it'll change. This morning it was sunny and now it's raining out here. That's why we've moved to the front porch. So we're going to put a little of this glue down inside that hole. And as we push this peg through it, it's going to carry that glue all the way through that hole. 
So, and something cool about it also is it tends to lubricate the hole when we put the peg through. All right, so that is our first peg. Now there's a little bit hanging out and when this dries we're going to shave that off a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect because once again it's going to be wrapped with that leather strap. Do this the easy way. I'm going to roll it. There we go. And we're going to put a little back in the hole again. Now what these dowels are going to do is oak is very very strong across the grain it's very hard to break but it's not all that hard to split oak so by putting these dowels through here that gives us some oak that's cross grain against this running grain and allows us to get a little stronger handle out of it our last dowel. Don't worry, I'm not serving tea with my fingers sticking out. I'm just trying to keep most of the epoxy off me. And we're all the way through. And that's it for a little bit now. we got to let this dry. Um, like I was saying earlier, different epoxies are rated for different working time. This is a five minute epoxy which means it dries a little bit slower. But that's not a bad thing because it gives us some time to work with it. Alright, now we're going to put the clamp back on a second time to hold it in place while we glue the rest of this handle. Now this time I'm going to make a load of this glue because I want to put a good bit of it inside this cup because all of that's going to go together. Now, by the time I finish wrapping the rest of this around here, I'm going to have some leftover strap, but I set it up that way on purpose. I cut it extra long because you don't want to get the glue on, get halfway down that handle and go, uh-oh, I don't have enough. So make it extra long. Give yourself a foot or so of extra leather to make sure that you can complete the job. You can cut the end of it off as soon as, you, as whenever you're ready. All right, so let's make a busload of this stuff. Well, not a busload, that would be a lot, but quite a bit anyway. Okay, we mixed up our big old pile of glue here. There's not that much handle left, but there is a good going to be an, a good bit of extra space around the inside of this cup. So we're going to get some plenty of it in there. Make sure you get some directly on the bottom of it too because you're going to want that to glue right up to the bottom of the handle. All right, I think we're good there. Now, I'm going to keep some extra because once we put it on, we're going to see some gaps around that cap and we're going to fit some into that. take the clamp off and continue holding that leather in place with my thumb so it doesn't slip and get loose on us. And we're going to get the rest of this stuck real good. All right. Yep, got a gap right there. All right. Now that seems to have glue on everything we need to have. Nope, forgot the, the end of it. A little more on here. All right. 
So let's finish up our wrap here. And I know I could make a music joke right now about a wrap, but... I'm putting on leather with a girl named Heather Kidding. Sorry, that's all I could think of. Heather, leather. Not much to work with there. Better in any kind of weather? There you go. I'll put on some leather in any kind of weather. All right, that's, that's not too bad, Clyde. I can live with that. All right. Now we're going to get out our trusty, dusty pocket knife, which hopefully isn't all that dusty. And we're going to trim some of this excess off. <sighs> Having trouble with it, but I will get it. Oh, the joy of the work made. It's going to help me out here. I can stretch it tight and cut it off. All right, now take our cap and we're going to crank it on in the same direction that our leather is twisting. And that's going to kind of tighten it into place as we go. Push it all the way down as far as you can get it. Okay, I think that's about all we're going to get out of it. We've got a little gap right here that we're going to put a little more of that excess glue in because we got a lot of it. And it will help to keep it in place. Beat of it all the way around. And there was another little gap. All right. all right, and that's it. That's how you repair that leather handle. If you found this video to be helpful and informative, Please, don't forget to like us up above, subscribe down below, and please, make sure you come to visit us at AskBill1911.com. Hi, Bill1911 here. Today I'd like to talk to you about something that's very important to us, and that's your safety. Do not attempt any of the things you see on our videos until you have thoroughly reviewed and understood our safety procedures. Also, if you're under 18 years of age, do not attempt any of these topics without the consent of your parent or guardian. Thank you.